So once we've figured out what the chemistry is, we can write the overall equation for the cell reaction. Now we can start to do some calculations where the mathematics comes in and we figure out what's being produced and how much energy is required. We measure electric current in amperes and we measure the charge in coulombs. We talked about this in lab. We know that the definition of a coulomb is an ampere times a second. So one coulomb is equal to one ampere second. So the first type of problem that you might encounter is to be able to calculate how much charge is generated when a current runs through an electrolysis cell. So the first simplest problem, what is the charge generated by a 5 amp current flowing for 10 seconds? Well, we know current is equal to, I'm sorry, the charge is equal to the current in amps times the time in seconds. So that's equal to 5 amps running for 10 seconds is equal to 50 ampere seconds so my charge is equal to 50 coulombs because a coulomb is an ampere second. Now, when we look at this, we use the Faraday constant to relate the charge in coulombs to the number of electrons. And you will often see the Faraday written kind of like this. I wasn't able to type it, so I did try and use a, a script font for the F to represent the Faraday. So one Faraday is equal to 9.65 times 10 to the fourth coulombs per mole of electrons. Now, the Faraday constant is a two-part unit, so we can use it as a conversion factor in our calculations. And these calculations are going to sort of follow this root of this little flow chart that I pulled out of your book. If you know the current and the time, you can multiply them to get the charge in coulombs. If we know the coulombs, we can use the Faraday constant to get the number of moles of electrons. And if we know the chemistry and the mole ratio in the cell reaction, we can get the moles of material reduced or oxidized. And then using the molar mass, we can change that to get the mass of the product. Or if we're looking at um, a gas, we could get the liters of that product. So let's look at a fairly typical problem. How many grams of copper are deposited on the cathode of an electrolytic cell if we have a current of 2 amps running through a solution of copper sulfate for about 20 minutes? Well, first we think about what's going on. Here we have copper 2 sulfate. So copper 2 sulfate dissolves in water and it gives us copper ions plus sulfate ions. The copper is what's undergoing the electrolysis, so we ignore the sulfate. So we have copper 2 plus gaining two electrons to make copper solid. Now if we look at this half reaction, we can see that one mole of copper is produced from two moles of electrons. Now we grab our periodic chart and we see that one mole of copper has a molar mass of 63.546 grams of copper. And we look at the time in minutes and think about how we'll convert that to seconds. 60 seconds per one minute. So we've collected information. Now we're ready to go ahead and calculate the charge in coulombs. We know that the charge in coulombs is equal to the amperage times the time in seconds. So my charge is equal to my current 2.00 amps running for 20 minutes, and I need seconds to get the coulomb in charge, so I'll multiply times 60 seconds per one minute. Now my minutes cancel, and I'm left with ampere seconds, and I get 2,400 coulombs of charge. So I now know the charge. Now I have to figure out how much copper I can get from that amount of charge. So I have my 2,400 coulombs. I can keep three sig figs so that first significant zero exists and the second zero is not significant. So now I'll change my charge in coulombs into moles of electrons. I know that one mole of electrons has 9.65 
times 10 to the fourth coulombs. And I know that one mole of copper uses two moles of electrons. So at this point, my coulombs of charge have canceled and my moles of electrons cancel. So I have my answer in moles of copper. Now I want to change it into grams of copper. 63.546 grams of copper is one mole. And so I get 0 0.790 grams of copper. That's not a lot of copper, but 2 amps um, of current isn't that much, and we're only running it for 20 minutes. So now go ahead and pause the video, work the problem below, and then hit run and rerun this video to see the solution. So the solution to this video, we know that we have gold 3 chloride, so I have a gold 3 ion in solution. It'll pick up three electrons to get reduced and make gold metal. This time I'm trying to find the current, so I have to kind of go backwards. I start off with my three grams of gold. I know that I want to make three grams of gold, and I know that one mole of gold has a mass of 196.96655 grams of gold. It takes three moles of electrons to make one mole of gold. And we know that it takes 9.65 times 10 to the fourth coulombs of charge per one mole of electrons. So we have uh, 4,400 and 9.4 coulombs. I can only keep three sig figs there, so I'm going to round at the end to my three sig figs. So my 4,409.4 coulombs divided by my time, 20.0 minutes. I need it in seconds, so I know 60 seconds is one minute. And I can keep three sig figs at the end. I get 3.67 amperes. And that is the current that would be required to deposit the desired amount of gold in the allotted time.